Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 2, entitled Remembrance of Lord Krishna. And we are on text 18. So Canto 3, Chapter 2, Text 18. It's May 29th, 2022. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaivan Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatojayamudiraya. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should first offer respectful obeisances and to the personality of Godhead Narayan, and to Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Praya Srivadra Shunicham Bhagavata Seve Bhagavati Tamashloki Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki. Nigama Kalpatur Galitam Palam Sukumukaram Rita Dravi Sam Yutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Mahura Horasika Bhuri Babuka Krishna Svadhamma Bhagate Dramagana Divisa Kalam Nasham Trisham Esha Purnako Duno Ditaha Canto 3, Chapter 2, Text 18 Ka Va Amusha, Angri, Saroja Renum, Vismartum, Isita, Puman, Dijigran, Ya, Visparat, Bu Vitapena, Bume, Baram, Krita Antena, Tirash Chakara, Oba Amushan Grisaro Jarenum, Bamushan Grisaro Jarenum, Bismar to me, she tapuman bijigran, Bismar to me, she tapuman Baram Kritantena Nira Tirash Chakara. Baram Kritantena Tirash Chakara. Kobamu Shangri Saroja Renum. Kobamu Shangri Saroja Renum. Bismar to me, she tapuman bijigran. Vishma to me, she tapuman bijigran. Your beast Tiras Chakara. Baram Kritantena Tiras Chakara. Kobamu Shangri Saroja Renum. Kobamu Shangri Saroja Renum. Vismar to me, she tapuman bijigran. Vismar to me, she tapuman bijigran. Yo, Varam Kritantena Tiras Chakara. Varam Kritantena Tiras Chakara. Kova Amushang Risaroja Renu. Kova Amushang Puman Vijigran. Yobis Purad Bruvi to pain a boomer. Param Kritam Tena Tiras Chakara. Param Kritam Tena Tiras Chakara. 
Hova amushangri saroja renum. Hova amushangri saroja renum. Vishmar to Mishika Puman Vijigran. Smart and she to Puman Vijigran. Yo Vishpurad Bru Vita Pena Boomer. Vishpurad Bru Vita Pena Boomer. Baran Quitantena Tiras Chakara. Baran Quitantena Tiras Chakara. Would anyone else online like to recite the verse, Canto 3, Chapter 2, Text 18? We'll go to the word for word. Ka. Ka. Who else? Who else? Va. Va. Either. Either. Amusha. Amusha. The Lords. Hello. Angri. Angri. Feet. Feet. Saroja Renum. Dust of the lotus. Be smartum. To forget. To forget. Ishita. Ishita. May be able. May be able. Puman. Puman. Person. Person. Vijigran. Vijigran. Smelling. Smelling. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. One who. One who. Vispurat. Expanding. Bhuvitapena. Bhuvitapena. By the leaves of the eyebrows. By the leaves of the eyebrows. Bhume. Bhume. Of the earth. Of the earth. Baram. Baram. Burden. Burden. Krita antena. Krita antena. By death blows. By death blows. Tirash chakara. Tirash chakara. Executed. Executed. Translation. Who? after smelling the dust of his lotus feet even once, could ever forget it. Simply by expanding the leaves of his eyebrows, Krishna has given the death blow to those who were burdening the earth. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Lord Krishna cannot be accepted as one of the human beings, even though he played the role of an obedient son. His actions were so extraordinary that by the simple raising of his eyebrows, he could deliver death blows to those who were burdening the earth. Omangyana timirandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshur anmilitam yena tasmai shri guave namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svaya Mupa Ketamayam Dadati Sva Padantikam Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaragnatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadve Tam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Bitamas Cham. Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopi Shah Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos Dute Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavane Shre Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranabhami Hari Priye Panchikalpa to Yubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyeva Cha Patitanan Pavani Bio Vaishnava Bio Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pabuni Chananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gwavani Pacharine. Nervishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine. Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 3, Chapter 2, Text 18. Kvamo Shangri Sarajare Nom Vismar Tumishita Puman Vijigran. Yuvis Parad Bhu Vitopena Bumer Baram Kritantena Tiras Chakara. Who, 
after smelling the dust of his lotus feet, even ones could ever forget it. Simply by expanding the leaves of his eyebrows, Krishna has given the death blow to those who were burdening the earth. Right? So for context, this is Sri Uddhava speaking, uh, speaking to, to Vidura. Mm. Yes. And, and uh, all right. So uh, I'm reminded right to in the uh, beginning of, of the Bible, the Old, Old Testament in the Hebrew, uh, uh, there's it, I said, there's it said B'Tselem Elohim. Okay, so uh, Selim in modern Hebrew, uh, Tzilum means photocopy. I remember I was in my first was in one of my first services as Bhakti Dave. I would go to the photocopy shop. And I would ask for Tzilum photocopy. So God created humans in His image. Okay, so we can read this verse and speaks about lotus feet and speaks about eyebrows. So if we notice, we will find that we have eyebrows and we have feet, um, not necessarily lotus feet. Uh, lotus indicates transcendental, not affected. Like, like the lotus is, it's in the water, but the, the, the lotus flower is untouched by the water. So Lotus indicates we're not escaping from the world in the name of spirituality. We're participating and we're not influenced by the world. We're participating purposefully for transcendental purpose. So we have eyebrows, okay, and, and we have feet. Okay, so then, um, and, you know, and, and so like, again, it's, well, let's, in the biblical tradition, you know, so uh, there, are so, there are so many times there where it talks about the bodily features of God, the, the hand of God and the face of God and, and, uh, and it, uh, on and on, on, on and on. There are so many places where it talks about the uh, bodily features of God. Mm. And, uh, okay. And so, mm, mm. so this, so, so we could say that we could say so. So this Krishna has a human-like form, and and sometimes it's described in that language. More precise, I would say, is we have a godlike form. We have a Krishna-like form. Okay, our form is not godly. Uh, this this material body, but so because you know there's this whole concept of like anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism. Oh, you're just imagining because you you have a need for a father figure. So you're imagining, you know, God, this is very primitive, very unsophisticated. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. And so you, but so, so sometimes we talk about reverse anthropomorphism. The idea, the idea that God does not and cannot have a form or personality that's based that's based on my conception of my eyebrows, right? My conception of this body and the, the forms and bodies of, you know, my friends around me and like that, no, this is all limited. This is all subject to disease and old age and we're faulty in so many ways and imperfections. So you say, God has a form and personality. No, that couldn't be. So in other words, the rejection of the possibility of God having a form and personality is based on my anthropomorphic conception of what form and personality must be, my very limited, very limited box nine dots conception. Okay. So that's called it reverse anthropomorphism. Mm. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so form and personality and sound and name and pastimes and activities, that starts, that starts with Krishna. It starts in the, in the spiritual realm. Um, right, the, the, the aphorism where the Bhagavatam starts with Janma Dhyasi Yatunva Nitrata Tarteshva Bhigeshu Svarat, right? That, uh, 
that would exist in the effect that it must exist in its source. So we have form, personality, and we like to, we like to dance and, and we like to eat and we like to relate and communicate and all, all these things and we like to serve. And, all right, so, all right, so that must exist in the source. And in a different, so that's logic. And then in a different quality, right? In, in, in a different quality, Out, outside of the box and the nine dots like this, whether we're looking at the Greek philosophers like Plato or the Bhagavatam analogies. So this is like the shadow world. This is like the, this is like the dream world. Mm. Yes. And um, so just like from, from, from the shadow, okay, so first of all, the shadow does not affect this, the person. And the person controls the shadow. So in that analogy, the whole material energy, material forms, this is like, this is like the shadow energy of Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Bhakti yogena manasi samyak panihi temale apasya pusham purnam mayam chayad ahetukam. Vyasadeva went into a bhakti yoga trance and he saw the supreme absolute is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, and the whole material energy, Maya, uh, that's like his back, that's like the shadow. So from the shadow, we can get an idea. We can get an idea of the substance. The, like, okay, oh, the shadow has these shapes of like arms and legs. All right, so the actual person has uh, arms and legs. We can get some idea. We can get some idea. And simultaneously from the shadow itself, we really, we really don't get a clue of what the substance is made of and what the substance is like. So from these... So from these shadow forms, from these shadow forms, B'Tselem Elohim, right? So actually, so we're, we're made in God's image to quote the Old Testament. From these shadow forms, we can get a sense that there is substance, but, but, we, but we don't get any experience of what the substance, substance is actually like from the shadow. We don't get any experience of what, of what, spiritual substantial eyebrows are or feet are right? so there's a uh, a couplet a part of a poem we'd like to quote from william blake god appears and god is light to those poor souls who dwell in night but does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? Okay. So I think that where that little couplet goes from William Blake, it, like, it would be like contradictory or surprising to I think many people, but not to a studier of the Bhagavata. God appears and God is light. So you think he's going to celebrate. Isn't that what God is light? Yeah. God is a force, God is light. Woo, that's the ultimate. It's one, one. It's God appears and God is light. And then he says, to those poor souls who dwell in night. Ah, what? But does a human form display to those who dwell in the realms of day? Okay. So he's talking, I mean, that's my purport on Blake. I mean, he's, he's, he's expressing that the personal, the personal aspect, the personal realization of of the absolute, uh, that's the ultimate, that's the most com complete and comprehensive form. And kind of God is all light. Uh, that's, uh, you're missing a lot there. There's a lot of ignorance if, you, if we stop there. God, appear, God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night, but does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day. Okay. So, all right, we've referenced a few times so far in just our few minutes here the biblical tradition, specifically Old Testament, but New Testament, New Testament, then you get, it didn't, it got, God appears in a fully human form. Again, the human form is actually Krishna-like, God-like, 
not not really like God appears in a human form. Mm-hmm. Okay, Krishna appears in his form, and our forms are Krishna like. Like that. But anyhow, we can use the ordinary language. Even in the Old Testament, God, God's appearing to Abraham in human form, and not just burning bush, it's there. And then, of course, in the New Testament, you have Jesus appearing in some branches of Christianity, say that is God. We have an understanding, like, yeah, like, like Prabhupada, the pure devotee, is, is, uh, is, uh, is the full representation of the Supreme Personality of God and appearing in a spiritual body, you know, like that. But, okay. So then in, in the biblical, at least in the, uh, in the Judaic tradition, right? So, so God, some, some of you have maybe have heard me share this story. Uh, so, uh, right, I was, I, 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 I went to Israel in the summer of 83, I backpacked around Europe. And I remember towards the end of my four months there, I spent like two weeks at Villa Vrindavan in Italy. I read Gita cover to cover. And uh, I you know, was chan- started chanting 16 rounds per day that summer. And, um, and uh, yes, and then um, uh, I took a, uh, uh, they tried to engage me in service, they didn't succeed. So I just read lots of Bhagavad Gita, it was great. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and then I took a boat from, uh, I took a boat from, Italy to Greece on my way to Israel because I was studying in a, a, a thing, a project called the World Union of Jewish Students in Israel was going to, was going to start in September of 1983. And to Greece, I remember in, in, in Greece, I, I found through, I had a back to Godhead and I found oh, the Iskand Temple in Athens. So I made it there and they, uh, it was really, and because uh, like in, in Italy and like I stayed for two weeks, it was all thing and you know like that. But in Athens, kind of, I, I remember his name was Nanda, Nanda Gopa was the director. He was Greek. He spoke English, but he was Greek body. And uh, and he was like, okay. Then they they fed me prashad, and it was like, get out of here, get out of here. There was a whole thing. They they were very friendly. I could tell they had nothing against me personally. I don't think, but there was this whole thing in in Greek about the Hare Krishnas being CIA agents. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the, the devotees, they knew I wasn't a CIA agent, but but the, the government was like gonna cut, they were gonna arrest them and cut, it was like this whole heavy thing happening in Greece and um, the, the Greek government at the time. And uh, and so the devotees were like, yeah, we just can't be seen with an American right now. I said, oh, okay, thanks for the push arguments. <laughs> It was a personal in a sense, yeah. But there was their thing in the because of the, there was the, the anti cult, and the, that's how they were attacking them. But then I thought, oh, if I thought that was heavy from Greece, I took a boat to Israel, and then okay, it gets heavier, but we won't go into that chapter so much. I remember the boat to, to Israel to Haifa, it stopped in. Crete and Cyprus, each place for about four to six hours. So I did a, a walking tour of Crete and Cyprus. There's a there's a Greek Crete and a Turkish Crete, mm-hmm. or is it Cyprus? One of the islands Cyprus cut into two. Cyprus What's that? Well, one of them's cut into yeah. two. So I we, we were in the Greek side. Okay. All right, and I got to, to Haifa, Israel. All right, and then um, anyhow, so in my early days though. And I did some tour, and there was one um, one tour of. Uh, this was before the first intifada. The first intifada means uprising. That was December '87. Lots of stories. We won't go there. So things were a little more open there. So we could go to what is considered the West Bank and East Jerusalem, like that, before December '87. We could easily go. After that, a little, you know, a little edgy. So, but in one tour, and this is Jericho. It's like the desert outside of Jerusalem. And they, they took us to this ancient uh, synagogue, this ancient synagogue. And um, and again, I'd been, I, I studied some Prabhupada small books. I'd taken a lot of prashad by that time, was beginning to chant Japa. And right on the, on the floor of the synagogue, there was this mosaic. There was this mosaic. The first thing that came to me was, it looks like a Greek sun god or something. Okay. Yeah, 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 right. And so, and so, uh, 
Yeah, and um, and and it looked, it looked very unsynagogue like. It, it looked it looked very unsynagogue like. Um, you know, like, like that. I, I've been mostly to reform and conservative synagogues, a few Orthodox, like that. Look very unsynagogue because like in synagogues, it's like mosque, the, the Muslim mosque. You not just you don't have form of God. You don't you don't have a picture of a rabbi. You're like just nothing. Like there is not no you don't have a picture of a rabbi like in the it, like, like like there's just no forms there. I'm yeah in, at least in, in that tradition. So so this was uh, strange, and I asked about it, and the tour guide said, "Oh yeah, the ancient Jews. This was just for decoration." So I didn't buy it. So it was it was clear to me. It was clear to me that uh, no, they were clearly uh, honoring, worshiping uh, some sort of deity with form. You know, it's very clear. And then actually, it, it, just a few months later, I started studying pretty intensively some, some Jewish philosophy and history of Jewish philosophy. So it turns out there's a, there's a um, uh, rabbi <clears throat> named, the, his acronym is the Rambam. So he, I'm, I am naming him the Shankar Chari of Judaism. <laughs> it's my title for him. Yeah. I hope it's the, he's the Shankar Chari. Uh, yeah. So, ra, ra, so, so these great rabbis, they have acronyms. So Rambam is uh, Rabbi Moses Ben Machmanides. Rabbi Moses Ben Mach, And there's also the Ramban, Rabbi Moses Ben Nachmanides. Okay. So it's all, you got these acronyms. Anyhow, so the Rambam, he was he was uh, he was the physician to the Spanish king, and he was a great. And the, the Jews were very accepted. It's a history piece, just like say in the nineteen in the early nineteen hundreds into the twenties, the Jews were very prominent and um, influential in Germany. And that all changed. Well, the quick. time was in Spain. It was in Spain. Uh -huh. And shortly after, you had the Spanish Inquisition. And, you know, the Jews were uh, murdered and stuff like that and, yeah. and tormented. But at that time, you know, the Jews were, and so he would, there was a Jew rabbi physician to the king, like that. And so, so the Rambam, um, Mahmoudi, yeah, so he was, uh, he was very influenced by Aristotle, and Aristotle, the Greek impersonalist. And so Ramban gave a very impersonal image. So, so whenever you have in the, in the Bible about the hand of God and the eyebrows of God and the face of God and the, the back of God, so this is all metaphorical. This is all metaphorical, just like Shankar Chai mm -hmm. did like that. And then from what I studied there in Aisha Torah, Aisha Torah, that's a, a synagogue in, uh, in the, uh, uh, right by the Wailing Wall, Hakotel, in the old city of Jerusalem, Aisha Torah. I studied with top rabbis in the world, you know, Rabbi Weinberg, Rabbi Ackerman, like that. You love these names, I know. Okay, and um, so, so the Rambam was not, his philosophy was not accepted. His interpretations were not accepted much in his time. He had a small following, but his small following, they were enthusiastic. And within 200 years after his death, they became prominent to the point where, by the time I studied in the yeshiva, 1983, 84, there's a saying from Moses to Moses, I mean the two pillars of Jewish philosophy, Moses from the Bible, we've got the 10 commandments and uh, uh, Moses ben Machmanides, uh, the Rambam. Like, like you kind of like, these are just, acts, like you can't question it, it's like that. So he, he turned Judaism away from personalism, similar to Shankar Charya, who, of course, now I don't know, maybe Rambam was also a partial incarnation of Shiva. I don't know. Uh, this yeah. know. But so Shankar Charya, we certainly don't curse him. Uh, he's, he's a partial incarnation of Lord Shiva. At the same time, he had a service for Krishna. Right? Shiva, Shiva is a great devotee of Krishna. Shiram Yakada Divikara Vishesha Yoga Sanjaya Tena Hitata Pitagasti Hetu Yasambutama Pitata 
samupaiti karya govinda madi pujam tamam bhajami. Shiva is doing all that he's doing in service to Govinda. And one of what he did, he, he appeared as Shankaracharya to bring people away from the nihilism of what became known as the Buddhistic teachings back to the Vedas. And to do that, to meet them where they're at and support them to progress to what they were ready for, he gave a complete uh, 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 radical Advaitavad interpretation of the, of, of, of the Vedas. Uh, meaning like the ultimate absolute truth is is undifferentiated oneness without quality and even like appearances of Krishna and Ramachandra. Okay, that's, that's it's like mode of goodness type of maya, but it's still Ill illusory forms like that. So we so he had a purpose in doing what he did and he gave that interpretation. So we don't, we don't follow Shankaracharya. At the same time, we appreciate him. In fact, those who really know him, he, he, he wrote Jagannath, Jagannath uh, Astakam, mm -hmm. Jagannatha Swami, Nayana Patagami, Bhava Tume. He wrote Govinda Mastakam, these beautiful prayers about Mother Yashoda. So he's, you know, he's a servant of the gopis and he had a particular mission. Just like the Buddha had a particular mission. Buddha's a pure devotee. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So the typical conception is like that. Um, well, one thing would be like, yeah, well, if I, if I can't see God, or if I can't see any form of God, then it doesn't exist, right? As if our senses are not limited. it. Another thing is, well, all right, so if he's got eyebrows and feet, well, it must be limited, like my eyebrows and feet. Is it? No. So, he, no, he... So the Supreme Person of God has a body, Angani Yasi Sakalindri Vritimanti Pashanti Panti Kalyanti Chiram Jaganti, and Nandi Chinmaya said, Ujvala Vigrahasya Govindamadi Pusha Tamaham Bajami. Right. So so I said this is outside outside of the shadow, this shadow outside of the nine dots. So Krishna can impregnate with his eyes, he can he can eat with his eyes, he can do the functions of any limb with any organ and any limb. So again. From the shadow, we can get the idea that the substance exists, but we don't get an idea of the nature of the substance. Okay, so yeah, eyebrows and feet, but there is a completely transcendental, tending mundane conceptions. This is a theme in Bhagavad Gita: Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yuvati Tattvata Chaktivayam Tumhunar Janam Nati Mama Tisamjuna. Krishna says to Arjuna, like, if one, if you if you, if we, Arjun is representing us, if you, if you get the transcendental nature of my appearance, disappearance, and activities, that's liberation to, to, to get that, yeah, to, to get that. And so we were just discussing yesterday in Bhagavad Gita, our Bhagavad Gita course, we brought closure to the course, we're at this the second part of chapter 18, a quintessential Bhagavad Gita verse, Bhakti Maam Abhijana Tiyavanyas Chasmitapita Tatumantap Togyatva Vishite Tadanantara. And then Krishna says, okay, so to, to realize me, so God is inconceivable. That doesn't mean, so we can't understand. That's not true. Inconceivable means inconceivable by the empiric process of trying to apply our limited mind and senses. So to realize God, we can realize God. Um, we can realize God as fully as a jiva can realize God. And the process is different than the process is different than trying to control and enjoy that the, the, the process for knowing is this the epistemology of love and devotion serving or if not love and devotion at least discipline right the idea is pure love and devotion well, i'm not there and then we, we discipline ourselves according to the uh uh, in alignment with the guidance of Krishna's pure devotee, our current link to the Pram Prashul Prabhupada, we guide ourselves. And then gradually the love, the natural love awakens, the natural love awakens. Mm. So, um, yeah, so through devotion, Krishna says, only oh, through devotional service, then, then we please Krishna and he, he, he reveals what are transcendental eyebrows, what are transcendental lotus feet, what are, what, are, what are transcendental activities? Yes, yes. And so, 
Yeah, right. So that and there's a, a quote by like a, a a personal growth leader for the past two decades. A, a quote that you know I think there's truth to it. He said, "Yeah, to in order, yeah, in order to to be motivated, we need either inspiration or desperation." <laughs> So I think it's 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 a good quote, and 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 and, and that's true, and, and and that's true, and there's uh, there's a uh, place you know place for both, like inspired, like oh I'm so, so inspired, you know, so so inspired by these descriptions in Bhagavatam, I'm inspired by the example of Shri Prabhupada, I'm inspired by the ins, and through that inspiration, through that inspiration, let me. Let me take to devotional life. Let me take to it more today than yesterday, more this year than last year. Let me take to endeavoring to chant attentively, chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And let me, yeah, let me, let me follow the regular principles more rigorously from inspiration. And, and then the, the desperation can be helpful also. The, 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 temp the desperation the, the, the desperation can, can be helpful also that uh, that, that like the, the desperation you know that's you know to, the, the honest introspection that I'm really suffering in the shadow life I'm really suffering in the desert life there's a, a quote by Prahlad Maharaj Interestingly, just this morning, before I came to Malini's house for morning program, I read for about 15, 20 minutes Sri Mad Bhagavatam. In my personal reading, I'm reading, uh, I'm on the fifth chapter of the seventh canto of Sri Mad Bhagavatam. And I'm towards the end, in, to, to, uh, like in the middle, beginning and middle of that chapter, Prahlad Maharaj quotes about the process of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Bandhanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam, nine processes of pure devotional service. Meaning even if we're not pure, but we're taking shelter in those processes, we're practicing pure devotional service. We're not practicing karma yoga or jnana yoga, even if we're not pure in practicing it, but it's the process of pure devotion. So that's why, Sometimes Prabhupada liberally uses the term pure devotee, one who's practicing the process of pure devotional service. And mm, yes, and you know, and and and, and it just, so I'm, I'm right towards the end of that chapter. And there's the end of that chapter because Prahlad Maharaj is speaking about the glories of Krishna and Vishnu and devotional service to his father, Vanikashi Pu and his father. And this is already like third, fourth time. So his father's getting violent, you know, at this point. And he try, tries to kill Prahlad in different ways through trampling by elephants and through poison and throwing off cliff. So and then he's just so frustrated. And then Sanda and Amarka, you know, the, the sons of Shukracharya and the teacher, the, the, uh, the teachers of Prahlad, they, they go to Aranyakashipu and they say, um, they say, uh, yeah, I mean, at one point Aranyakashipu was angry at them. Like, why are you teaching him all this Vaishnav stuff? You know, you're, you're a traitor. And then they convinced him, it's not us. He's not getting it from us. Then he got angry at Prahlad. All right, and you know, but then, so he's really, he, now he's not, he's just, not just angry. Now he's scared. Five-year-old boy, he tries to kill him through, you know, all these means. And Prahlad just like, won't be killed. Kind of like, Haridas Thakur, Haridas Thakur, just wouldn't be killed, you know, by the be beating in the marketplace. So then Sanjana Marka come to him and go, look, look, He's just a boy. You don't need to be frustrated. And they remind him, we remember who you are. And they say, interesting, we're reading this verse, because just this morning I read, just, just before I got in the car to come to, to Malini. And they say, just by lifting your eyebrows, the demigods, the demigods shake in fear. Just remember, you don't need to be an anxiety. He's a little boy. And it will teach him. We'll be, he'll be okay. And, uh, and so they were, just by lifting your eyebrows. So, yeah, so shadow life, shadow life means, um, um, shadow life means endeavoring to be, you know, uh, a successful materialist like Hiranya Kashipu, where just by lifting my eyebrows, people are fearful or inspired. I'm the controller, I'm the enjoyer. And then, 
And then Prahlad says, you know, he says, Majuna Krishna, Paratasa Tuba, Mito Bipadeta, Griham, Griha, Vratam, yes, Adantako Beer, Vishtam, Tamisha, Puna Puna, Shabitacha, Chavan. And so uh, Prahlad talks, he, he's telling his father, this is all, this is all chewing the chew, you know. This is all chewing the chew. I feel like, <laughs> probably in that, in describing that analogy, use it, analogy uses it like, like if someone has chewed sugar cane and there's no juice, then someone else chews it. And it, it's just like, I think like if we're chewing gum, oh, there's some flavor after an hour. And then we throw it on the ground. It's, the analogy is meant to be gross. Yes, yes. We, th we throw it on the ground. We've chewed it for four days. Someone else picks it up. Yeah. Oh, gum. This, so like, is this, it's meant to be disgusting. So the idea that there's inspiration and desperation. So the, the desperation is just like, this is just chewing the chew, the same, the same escape mechanisms, the same sense gratification it doesn't satisfy the soul right in economics there's a law of diminishing returns okay right so um, the pizza example right okay that piece of pizza oh yeah second piece yeah third piece okay but then the fourth piece we know it's not a size on the fifth piece at some level eight nine ten just like nah this is toward you you need to pay me a lot of money to have another piece of mm -hmm. those will decide decide is the pizza good or bad well it was good 45 minutes ago but now it's it just diminished so everything's like so all you know all we're going for it's it's all shadow it's all shadow stuff it's just like the the glare of maya the the illusion that there's some temptation there's some juice there there's some juice there <clears throat> Jim Wood just put up a what's it called an emoji an icon of pizza. That's amazing. I don't know how you did that, but he did it. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Okay. So um, yes. <laughs> so so like getting desperate. Like no, this is not fulfilling me. This is empty. This is dry. Uh, what, whatever it is we're going for. Oh, there's another you know, that job that that sex over there. That you know. Oh, I'll eat, of course, if we're truly, if we're truly like in the mood of relishing prashad and service to Krishna, then, they, then the eating process is, is blissful. So like, yeah, and this is chewing the chew. I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm disgusted. Let me give myself to the internal energy of the Lord. Krishna says the truly great souls, the truly intelligent people, they take shelter of the internal energy. That's the energy of bhakti. And then through the internal energy, then we, then we open the door and we get, we get experience, we get glimpses of that which is beyond shadow life. We get glimpses of, 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 this, of, of this transcendental personalities and even our own transcendental personalities of spiritual eyebrows, spiritual lotus feet, like that. And, uh, and he's like to, to develop a hankering for that. There's a purport in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where you know, Krishna is giving a glimpse of the spiritual world. Krishna says, yeah, there's no, no need for moon, sun, electricity. Prabhupada quotes it as electricity, fire, right? everything self-illuminating, where every every song's a dance, that's Brahma Samhita. Every 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 step is a dance, every every word is a song, right? Where every the every limb can do the functions of, of every other organ and limb, and every moment exists eternally. They saw so to 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 get yeah, that's what I want. Prabhupada writes in the purport. One should be captivated by this information. So that's that's why like Odava the Dwarva giving us travel brochures for the spiritual realm to 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 for the spiritual consciousness. Hmm. All right, so I'll I'll read this verse in purport again. Then I'm glad to hear any discussion, questions, or comments. 
Canto 3, chapter 2, text 18. Who, after smelling the dust of his lotus feet even once, could ever forget it? Simply by expanding the leaves of his eyebrows, Krishna has given the death blow to those who were burdening the earth. Hare Krishna. Thanks for hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And um, yeah, so... I welcome at this time uh, any any questions, comments, realizations. Malini. It doesn't seem that it's a lot of effort for Krishna to kill the demons. Always looking like we move our eyeball all the time. Right, right. Not much effort. Not much effort, right? That, exactly. And so Udav is emphasizing that point simply, simply. By expanding the leaves of his eyebrow. Right. Leaves. Leaves is like the folds, right? Kind of like the uh -huh. folds on the forehead. Yeah. By expanding the leaves and the folds, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and that's the point. Like, so like your your comment, Melanie, reminds me, there's the verse uh, four point eight in uh, Bhagavad Gita Purichanaya Sajra Bhinashaya. Dharma Sam Yuge So Krishna says, oh yes, yeah, so to annihilate the miscreants and to deliver the devotees, I appear, regularly I appear in every millennium. So Prabhupada makes it clear that actually Krishna appears to give pleasure to his devotees. So as far as like, you know, this destroying the demon thing, um, it, like Krishna, Krishna can easily and does easily do that through like let, let's say if uh, Krishna through his expansion expansion Vishnu decides decides to uh, to move the Atlantic Ocean a quarter of a percent you know expand it you know then just like cities crash in that That's way happened. and it, yeah coming. yeah cities crash or just uh, no it's like to, so to destroy I mean that, that that could be done through his energies but. But um, Krishna personally appears really to give pleasure to the devotees in that ras, in the in that ras. So yeah, as far as and then and then the devotees sort of Krishna, Krishna. That's not easy for Krishna. Then Krishna feels forever indebted to the gopis and the coward boys. And so that's like yeah, but right, just by just by you know with the pinky of his left hand, he can lift over there. So so destroying the demons. It's nothing. Yes. Well, and also it seems that in that verse that, um, that Krishna, the, the demon that he destroyed directly, it's also to peace his devotees. Awesome. And all because they, they, they are special. Yeah. It's not like anybody like Hitler or so many demons that are on earth right now. They are not going to be destroyed by Krishna. Right. They are going to be destroyed by Krishna's energy. Yeah. And so you really come to give pleasure to his devotees, devotees. even when yeah. he kills the demons, he's yeah. still to give pleasure to his yeah. devotees. Yeah, as, as an aside, one way I give, I give pleasure to the devotees is by destroying the demons. And of course, his destroying the demons is his compassion for them, because then as we read them, they, they get joyful liberation. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about exchange with the devotees. Yeah. Compassion and Krishna. I have two other comments. You want me to make them now? So one comment is about inconceivable, and I appreciate you say inconceivable. It doesn't mean like, oh, it's mystical, I cannot understand. Yeah. But like, the inconceivable, like you, you said, like it's like something we cannot conceive. Right. right. It's just like the, the, the uh, conceiving something means like, I, the source of the power right. that gets me to conceive of something. Yeah. And yeah. inconceivable, is I don't have the power. Right. I really don't have the yeah. power to conceive yeah. of anything. Yeah. And then the last, yeah. the last point I wanted to make is uh, um, what you said about the Rambam. Okay. Like, yeah. 
you said like it was a very small movement. Uh, yeah. It was at first very small, and yeah. the majority of the people they were following God. Yeah. And somehow when you said that, you gave me some hope. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Like 200 years, something small Expanded. can start uh, uh, so if people are enthusiastic and start can influence a world of that, you know, tradition. That gave me some hope. Yeah. Yeah, that remind your comment, Malini. Remind there's a quote. It's by it's by some female author, maybe from a hundred years ago, maybe Pearl S. Buck. I think she's the author of The Good Earth. And so something the, the quote goes: um, Don't never, never underestimate the power of a small group of people to change the world. Indeed nothing else ever has. Wow. And in other words, like everything small starts with, you know, change starts in the world of ideas. So, so what, what she's saying is like everything, all the major changes started with some small group of people discussing some ideas. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, other comments or questions? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If not, we'll bring it to a close. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you all. Thank you for your class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.